Welcome back to this series of Black Hat Executive Spotlights. Terry Sweeney here with Black Hat, and I'm joined now by Amitabh Singh, CTO Cortex EMEA for Palo Alto Networks. Amitabh, thanks for joining us for this for today. Thanks for having me. Uh, we are talking about uh, making it easier for SOCs to do their actual job, which is, of course, handle security. Um, I, I think a lot of companies or organizations thought when they were building security operations centers, um, expected to see uh, either maybe a drastic reduction in security incidents or perhaps even the total elimination of that. Um, that's obviously not happened. Um, why do we still see cyber attacks despite all the security operations centers that have been built? Good question, Terry. It reminds me of the story the, from my own hometown when they would say that if you establish a few more police stations, you would see a reduction in crime. It's not just that, it's also how effective those, those police uh, communities have been. And I think that's the question that we have to start asking ourselves. When we establish a security operation center, we need to understand it's not just the, co the cost of, impl uh, of implementing security operation center. You also have to understand how effective and efficient that is. And I think those are the questions that are being asked now and were not being asked earlier. Because as a CISO, I would have probably about five, 10 years back would have thought that I have a SOC, I'm secure. Mm -hmm. I think it's clear that that has been proved, that assumption has been proven wrong quite often right now. Uh, simply another uh, tool or set of tools to, to address um... I think it's fair to say uh, an escalating cybercrime wave that that has roiled organizations and companies worldwide. Yes, that is true, Terry. I think it's not just you're, you're right about the tool set as well. So, so you know, when we created the first generation security operation center five ten years back, we were creating something called a log management tool. So you would actually try and create a SIMS, a security incident and event monitoring tool. And the idea was that we would probably throw all our log sources into this central area. Once the logs are there, uh, they will all talk to each other and the magic would happen. And suddenly we would all start getting to know the security information incidents and which we would be able to catch in the right time. Unfortunately, that's not the reality of modern corporations. Modern corporations have so many log sources that you're talking about billions of events on a, on a per month basis which means that it's impossible to find and track the real security incidents. And even once they are really tracked, we have created a hierarchy of how it's being monitored. It goes from a level one agent to a level two agent. And finally it's at level three agent that she tries to say, okay, this is what I need to do at that point of time. It takes too much time, uh, by which time most of the damage that could have been done has been done. And it's also extremely expensive. So that, that's the problem why we are saying the SOCs typically have started to fail a lot of the companies. Contributing to that load picture that you described just a few minutes ago is, of course, uh, the advent of cloud. It's, it's, a, it's a reality for, for enterprise networking for, for most large organizations. How do we manage cloud assets for security? So typically cloud, what we've been working on before the cloud era, Terry, just as a brief example of how, why you're asking such a good question, and I'll explain that is that before cloud, we were all thinking about security the way it would happen in medieval ages. You know, you'll have a big fort with big wall and then inside walls, and those would kind of secure the environment, which is what probably pre perimeter security is all about. What has happened now with the advent of cloud, there's no perimeter security. Well, there is, but not in the real way. It has to be all virtual. And the problem that's also that's facing most of the global corporations is that the number of cloud instances is, is far too many just to know what's happening at what point of time. So in order to manage cloud assets appropriately, one has to know an appropriate inventory of cloud assets, something that most organizations were already failing when they were trying to keep track of what were their real IT assets. And I think that's something that we should be able to deploy the tools that are available to manage those cloud assets appropriately, because only when you know those assets can you manage the security by that. And I think it's important that most CISOs take a deep and close look of how to manage, monitor, and define which cloud assets they are they have in their environment. One of the dynamics that we're seeing in parallel is 
the expansion of the attack surface. Certainly cloud contributes to that. Uh, the, the work from home movement that has, again, swept the, the, the globe in the last 18 months uh, has expanded it exponentially. Um, talk about what attack surface management is and what it looks like. So Terry, typically in, in, the, in the case of uh, corporations, attack surface would be typically limited to, as I was saying earlier, perimeter security. Now with the advent of cloud, attack surfaces all across the cloud assets, the home working employees, any kind of mergers and acquisitions that they've been potentially talking to or exchanging data with, and also with their third party suppliers. So that means that your attack surface has gone so big that it's impossible for companies to track which are their weak areas that hackers can infiltrate. So that typically management of that attack surface, the entire internet facing um, site for, uh, for the corporation is what we would call as attack surface management. And we need to not just manage that, we need to secure that appropriately. In that same vein, Amitabh, help us understand why, why seams aren't able to manage security incidents in real time. So SIMs have been, as I was saying earlier, becomes a big of a challenge in terms of managing security. So what I was saying earlier was that in a, in a typical security incident, normally most corporations get about 35 minutes to an hour before they need to respond. Because if you don't do that within that time frame, the infection just moves laterally or to other parts of the environment. What SIM does is, is actually tries to identify, first of all, the root cause of infection. Unfortunately, there are too many um, different indicators of the same infection. So when there's a log coming in from the network side, when there's a log coming from the firewall side, when there's a log coming from the endpoint side, these are all logged as different incidents. And then when the correlation happens, it again, of course, goes to a level one person and a level one agent would then have to try it to the next level. As I was saying earlier, by the time it reaches the level three security analyst, it's too late. And it also does not take into account all the various alerts that have been passed through that. What we really need in the environment is an automation where before it comes to an analyst, there should be an automatic stitching off all those incidents from the network side, from the endpoint side, from the cloud telemetry, defining clearly that this is the story behind this one security incident that has caused five, 10, 20 alerts. And that saves a lot of time for corporations to react uh, and manage the security issues. So if I'm not using my SIEM, what are my, what are my options for managing real-time incidents in the SOC? So the way we would like to do it right now is the XCR philosophy, which is, which is now most corporations have been trying to move to. So what that does is that all the information that's coming from the endpoints, from the, from the network traffic analysis, which is firewalls and all the other areas that you've got from network and the cloud telemetry, you're able to stitch all of that into one data lake. Um, in the case of SIM, Previously, when we were putting the log sources into SIM, you have to do a lot of tuning. In this current case, that tuning element completely goes out because those use cases are clearly well defined. And so what the analysts get is real artificial intelligence, which is where autonomous SOC works. And that, that is the real new flywheel of the SOC that most advanced corporations are now moving towards in order to manage security some great insights on improving the efficiency and effectiveness of our, of our SOCs. Amitabh, thanks for joining us for this Black Hat Executive Spotlight today. Thank you, Terry. It was my pleasure meeting you. We've been talking with Amitabh Singh, CTO Cortex EMEA for Palo Alto Networks. This has been Terry Sweeney for Black Hat. Thanks for joining us for this Executive Spotlight series, and we'll see you next time.